I am most excited to see what ideas the students come up with that we never would have expected. Previous classes came up with the mission and the guiding principles for the trail, um, and the mission that they came up with was to restore and rehabilitate the local ecosystem um, uh, while inspiring all people to connect with nature. Um, and last year what the classes did is that they went out um, and cleared a, a ton of honeysuckle. Um, they created some animal habitats for the trail. Um, they planted some uh, different native plants in the area um, and basically cleared out all the litter in the area. They were going to be collecting some data and doing some projects that would be used to help write a grant for um, turning some space by the school into a wetland. Um, so that, that they know, they always know the end result and they always know that it extends beyond just our classroom and it's, they knew that they were giving presentations to stakeholders, partners, they always know that the projects that we're doing have, a, they have real world application. The things that they're learning, they can apply elsewhere, but then also the end product has a life beyond the classroom and it's going to include other people beyond even there's just the school that are, could potentially use this and when that becomes the case when they know that their work is going to be seen by others outside of the school that becomes really it makes it more important for them and it empowers them even um, to want to do really well I think I think the biggest thing I guess is to to think carefully about what you want the final product to be um, making sure that that's authentic and meaningful and gets it whatever it is that all of the teachers want their students to get out of this project. Um, and if you spend a lot of time thinking about that, then the rest almost plans itself um, and becomes more logistical um, rather than you know thinking through, well, how do I meet all these things that I want them to get? If you think about what they should be able to demonstrate or do or accomplish at the end of the project, then the rest of it falls into place. This year, we predetermined all of the groups. We knew we were going to need um, a flora group, a fauna group, a soil quality group. We knew we wanted to have a documentary group, um, just documenting the process and creating a film out of that, which ended up being kind of the introduction for the whole project when we presented. Um, we knew um, that we wanted some groups focusing on animal habitats, what kind of habitats could be built right now to welcome native species into the area, um, or could be built along the way as we restore. And what that allowed us to do as teachers was almost um, specialize for a few groups. So some of the groups that were really taking data and mapping worked with our math geometry teacher on that. Um, our students who are really into using technology for the website, um, for documentary, worked with our social studies teacher because those are expertise that he has. I worked with all of the students on communication throughout the entire process. And then obviously the ones who were gathering data about the ecosystem worked with the biology teacher. Um, our wellness um, teacher, our wellness and fitness teacher also worked with students who were specifically focused on how to include fitness, uh, recreation, and um, educational conservation efforts. It's not always easy, but like I mentioned, my groups are dealing with mapping, which fits really nicely into the fact that this is a geometry class, and there are lots of sort of interesting geometry problems that, that arise when you're trying to measure something on a really big scale when you're not that big. And so there's a lot of geometry involved there. There are certainly lots of um, issues with sampling data analysis you have to consider when you're um, doing something like counting honeysuckle or, or taking different measurements of the stream. So there really is math that's involved even though it doesn't seem that obvious. We are hoping to graph the amount of honeysuckle in the surrounding areas and uh, from that data we're going to make a 3D uh, map that shows the densities of honeysuckle in certain areas. We expect the back of the building to have a large, a lot higher densi density than the front. Um, so we're going to do this by making 25 by 20 foot, 
25 foot by 25 foot square plots and um, we're going to look at the number of plants inside and then we're going to record that and then that's going to, that's going to be the data that we use to graph it and put it on a spreadsheet to show uh, potential sponsors so that they will be willing to invest in the solution that the groups uh, propose. My group is, well, we're collecting data of soil samples, so we're going out, we're digging holes in various places around the, the property to see where the wetlands used to be, like before it got covered up or moved or whatever happened to it. So we're looking, what we're looking for is um, oxidate, oxidization in the soil, which is like where the iron in the soil has become oxidized because of like plants and stuff releasing oxygen into the soil. So we're looking for like little orange streaks in places where the, uh, the soil is healthy to see where it used to be so we can make a recommendation as to where we should put it now. When the students have a lot of say, they really owned the project. They did not feel like the teachers owned it. They owned it. They were setting their agenda. You know, they were blogging about what their team was deciding and where they were going. And when they had a teacher with them who was simply facilitating or guiding them but not leading them at all, you know, the more you can do that in a project like this, the better off the kids will be, I think, because they take that ownership. This project is very important because it is part of our school. The land back there, at least part of it, is part of our school and we have a responsibility for it. And we should all take uh, part in uh, keep making sure it's you know, a semi-healthy environment, which is nowhere near that now. And I think also this idea that the kids are figuring things out for themselves. And yes, it involves the science, technology, engineering, and math, but it's really a way of learning. And it's them exploring and answering questions for themselves through discovery and not us standing up there telling them, well, this is why this environment is unhealthy, and this is what you need to do to make it healthier. It's them figuring out, well, why is it unhealthy, if it's unhealthy, how can we make it healthier? It's them figuring all that out through their experiences and through different mini lessons and things like that, instead of us just standing up there and telling them, well, this is why, this is what's wrong, this is what you need to fix, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna, we're gonna make a nature trail, and you're gonna do this, and you're gonna do that. It's them figuring that out for themselves.